visit to down Victoria, Vancouver, and that Washington area around Seattle. And these um, southern residents, they're not doing very well. There's only 78 of them left right now. They're dying off quite rapidly. And there's about 10% a year. They're growing to be smaller. They're hitting puberty later. They're not doing a lot of reproducing. We're not seeing a lot of calves. They're just not a healthy population. There's only four males reproductive age right now. So four out of 78, the odds are kind of stacked against them. The reason for this unhealthy population, scientists are kind of suspecting four different factors. But all four of those factors tie into the fact that they share this area with millions and millions of people. It's a really urbanized area. Um, to start off, the first um, reason thought to be is salmon. Salmon in BC is not what it used to be. The stocks are quite low. It could be a function of overfishing. Also logging, people don't look as salmon connected to logging, but logging kind of ruins the streams that these fish spawn in each year and put the new eggs. So logging can also be responsible, and there are natural fluctuations in the size of salmon populations. So all that put together, there's fewer fish, and fewer fish could equal fewer whales. The second reason, when whales were put to aquariums, it, mostly in the 60s was, where, 60s was when all the captures were, but 36 animals was taken from this southern population alone. So that's a huge number. I don't think the population was ever suspected to be any bigger than 110, 120 animals. So 36 is a third, so it's quite a lot. The third reason is the amount of boat traffic um, that's in that area. Tonight, I mean, we're pretty much the only boat out here on the water. It's a very different scene down in the southern resident area. There's records of 18 boats with the whales at all times during daylight hours. There's been 400 boats around a small group of orcas. So it's just much more concentrated down there. And it's a lot of recreational boaters. It's whale watching as well. Um, there's more whale watching boats out of that area than there are whales. So there's more than 78 watching boats. And also, it's a huge shipping lane as well. So that whole Fraser Riverway, it's everything that comes in and out of the BC goes through that river and through that area where the southern res residents are. So and the engine noise that comes from these boats, you've heard how vocal they are and how much sound they depend on sound in their lives. Engine noise is going to affect how, what they're doing. And then the fourth reason actually ties into those toxins I was talking about, but I am going to back it up a bit for you. The first marine mammals to be found with toxins in their blubber layer were the beluga whales in the St. Lawrence River Way. And this is just to illustrate what their toxin loads were. The jar is supposed to be one unit of body fat, and then the red is the amount, the amount of toxin in each unit of body fat. So these are the beluga whales, and when their bodies wash up on the shore of the St. Lawrence, their bodies have to be treated as toxic waste. So it's kind of a sad scene. Now the northern residents, they have levels like this. It is a bit more than the, the belugas, but this makes sense. They're a bigger animal and they're eating more salmon. However, the southern residents down around Seattle, these are their toxic four times more. And this is because of that the two factors. First of all, when the toxins are being released and they're linking into the ecosystem, a lot of that's going on down at the southern end of the island. And second of all, the geography of the area doesn't allow for the, the chemicals to be pumped out of the system by tides. Um, it's not flushed very well with the tides. So those to the toxins are very persistent to begin with, but low flushing by the tides compounds a problem. But to illustrate that it's not just the toxins that are the huge problem, the transient orcas have toxin loads of this magnitude. These are the most contaminated animals on the planet, these transient orca, They're at the top of the food chain. But this, we're, these transients aren't at the critical population stage of the southern residents. They may get there, we don't know, but it's, it's not just these that are affecting the southern residents, it's all of those four factors. One thing to note is that although these chemicals have been banned from our countries, westernized countries, they're still used in developing nations. And it's a global problem and it takes about seven days for chemicals released in the Orient to work their way through into our waters here. Seven days across the Pacific basins. 
It's a very, very global issue, so just to keep that in mind. And as well, everything we do on land ties into what happens in the ocean, so that's something to keep in mind as well. But enough of all the conservation. I don't mean to depress you guys. I see lots of glum faces in the crowd. I want to highlight something really good. There is hope out there. 30 years ago, these animals were shot at. A machine gun was mounted by the Canadian government at Campbell River to shoot these animals simply under pressure of the sports fishermen. They wanted those salmon protected, so they were about to kill off the orcas. Fortunately, it was never shot, which is good. But, and then 30 years later, attitudes have changed. We've learned more about these animals. And tonight, you guys are all out here seeking the animals in their own environment, being respectful and not crowding them being part of something really special, learning about them. It's just such an attitude change that illustrates that there's, there's hope. So no more sad faces. <laughs>